For those of you who don't know me, I'm Mother Joan. And it's mother, so you can call me that, even though the scripture says not to say father. I'm mother, so just teasing. Um, I was here this morning and then came back for this service. Love St. Matthews, love being here. Um, so make sure if I don't know you, introduce yourself afterwards. This scripture that we had tonight, the uh, one in Matthew, has um, some strange things in there, like don't call anybody father or rabbi or whatever. But I'm going to give you a story that might help us understand this scripture a little easier. There was a salesman in a camping store. And he was really good at his job. He made lots of sales. Well, this guy who was going to take a hike, a long hike, for his holiday, for his vacation, came into the store and he says, I need stuff. So he goes in and the salesman says, well, this is the kind of tent you'll need. Now, it's good, it it's stays up in all kind of weather, it has enough room for your equipment, it's easy to put up. So the man was new to hiking and camping and he said, Okay, all right. And he added it to the pile that already had uh, mats and socks and waterproof clothing that the salesman had already told him he needed. Then it was time for boots. So he goes over and he says, now these are the best boots ever. You can wear them if you uh, are on rocks or on sand, going uphill, if you happen to hit a little bit of water, whatever, and they are very supportive, so these are the boots. Then they came to the cooking equipment. And the salesman knew just what he needed, the stove, the fuel, the storage boxes. And then it was the same with the food. Personally, I'm not ever going hiking after reading this. But they got in there and he says, OK, you need this and this and this, long-lasting, nourishing food and water. And, he, and then the salesman said, OK, now this is how you're going to have to gather your water and purify it. And then it came down to the sleeping bag. He says, okay, here's the best sleeping bag. You need this one. Oh, and you need this. You got to burn this to keep the insects away. Oh, yeah, and a torch. You need a torch. And oh, yeah, you have to have an emergency first aid kit. So finally, after all of this, and this big pile of things that the man's going to need, he says, well, let's get your backpack. So he goes over, the salesman does, and he gets a backpack, and he said, well, this should be big enough for all this stuff. And he lifted down this huge, enormous backpack, and he said, and it's waterproof, and it'll sit real nicely on your shoulders. Well, the man paid the bill with the, uh, sales, with the uh, salesman, and the salesman assistant went over there, and he took all the stuff, and he put it all in the backpack, and he packed it all up nice and everything. And the new camper looked over at it, and he said, wow, looks very inviting. It's just one thing I've got to do with it now. Hmm. So he goes over, and he tries to pick it up. And he's going to, you know how you swing something around on your back, and he tries and it doesn't work. I mean, he can't even hardly pick it up. So he puts it back down, and he thinks, okay, how do I get this thing? So finally he decides that if he backs up to the counter and bends his knees a little bit and gets down like this, the assistant can put the thing over his shoulders. So he does. He gets this big, huge pat backpack on his shoulders and then he thought I don't know how I'm gonna get through all these mountains I can't even, I don't even know if I can get out of the shop with this thing so he looks at the salesman and he says well where do you go on your vacations what kind of vacations do you have and he says oh I just go to the seaside I don't I have a bad back I couldn't carry anything like that but the salesman said, but you need all of this. But he knew he couldn't do it. So this is, keep that story in mind as we go forward. Because as the man left the store, he got down to the end of the street. And he started thinking, you know, this reminds me of those scribes and Pharisees. He was a theologian, so it's okay. 
Reminds me of those scribes and Pharisees. Do y'all get that connection? I don't either. Not at first. It'll come to you. Well, first of all, let's talk about Matthew. This is the 23rd chapter of Matthew, and Matthew has five blocks of information in his, gospel, his version of the gospel that tells us different things about Jesus' life. Matthew is very, um, very uh, determined that we understood that the New Testament, or the writings of the day, lined up with the Old Testament. Do you remember in the in this gospel he says something about we're supposed to honor what Moses said and, and told us. The Torah is good. The Torah is still good. And um, so he wanted to make sure they lined up. In the early chapters, he did the Sermon on the Mount. Then he did the commissioning of the um, disciples. Then he did the parables. And then he did about living in community. And now he is telling us about the Sermon on the Mount, but he's also telling us there's something more coming, people. He's giving them a warning. Jesus is telling them things are going to change. See, Jesus and the disciples are on their way to Jerusalem. It's, they're on a journey already. Now, in about three weeks, we're going to stop this journey. We're going to stop this DVD right here in about three weeks, and we're going to jump right into Advent and into waiting for Jesus and his birth. But for now, we're still on this road to Jerusalem with Jesus. And remember, we'll pick it up later in Lent. But Jesus is headed there, and he wants them to understand what equipment they're going to need. You see, he told them back in, I think it was chapter 11, I have to look it up, that my burden is light. Jesus told them my burden is light. He was telling them, there's no need for you to be carrying around that big backpack with all the burden in it because that's what I came for. He was leading them to way the way through the wilderness just like Moses and then Joshua led them, the Israelites to the promised land. Jesus is now leading the disciples and us into eternity, into eternal life. But this time, unlike Joshua, uh, Moses couldn't go across, remember? Because he had sinned, so Joshua went across. And Jesus is going to go across and uh, Here's Jesus, and he's got all these legal experts around him with their big, heavy backpacks on. I wonder what's in those backpacks. I kind of think it has something to do with all of the laws that the uh, scribes and Pharisees said you got to do this and you don't do that. And Moses said this and Moses said that. And you're supposed to remember to do this every day. And it sounds like they're just this wonderful devotion to God that these scribes and Pharisees were carrying out in their lives. And they wanted you to know that. So what they do? Well, they had their phylacteries on. Do you know what a phylactery is? You ever seen a picture of, a, uh, especially an Orthodox Jew, and it's a little leather box? It looks like a little box sitting on their head. That's a phylactery. Might be on their arm. And inside of it are Bible verses. But if you had phylacteries, you were devout. You were wonderful. And then the tassels. The tassels were on the four corners of your garment. And the nicer and the longer the tassels, the more devote, devoted, the more devout, the more religious you were. They knew all this stuff, and they wanted you to know that they were very religious. And they wanted you to pay attention to Moses. But you know what? It wasn't wrong. It wasn't wrong that they told them to pay attention to what Moses said. Jesus even said that. What is wrong 
is the attitude with which they did it. And that the real point of the whole law of Moses, of this whole thing about Jesus coming was loving God and loving your neighbor. And somehow the scribes and the Pharisees lost that. It got all tangled up in these phylacteries and tassels and laws and, and their devotion to making sure that you were doing what you were supposed to be doing because they had to tell you what to do. They're, they wanted those places of honor. They wanted the titles of honor, and that's what Jesus is talking about on the titles. The title of honor doesn't mean anything if you don't act it. Have you ever seen kids who are told to be good, and they're good because they want to get something? It's not because they really want to be good. That's because they want something. This is what Jesus is saying. Love God and love your neighbor because, just, just because. Kind of reminds me of our current election process. I don't know about you, I'll be so glad when Tuesday is over. I'm so tired of hearing about how this fella is so good and this, and this other guy is so bad and then that guy says, I'm so good and he's so bad. And I've just decided that everybody in government's corrupt. Because that's what I've been hearing, is everybody's corrupt. So it's not about titles, it's not about what that, it is about loving God and loving your neighbor. Um, and then there are two verses that I want you to really hold in your heart this week. Think about them, pray on them. And it's verses 11 and 12, and it's in your program. It says, the greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. See, Jesus announced all of these things that we're to do, not from a high, a high place, not from a big golden chair, not from wearing um, all the expensive and nice robes in the temple. Jesus was on the way to the cross. He humbled himself. And he knew there was no room for heavy backpacks. He says, guys, there's no room. Come on, let's go. And he said that we don't have to shoulder those heavy burdens because he's going to do it for us. And I wanted to read you one more thing here. God gives us what we need in our own backpacks as we stumble through life. That's the way I feel sometimes, like I'm just stumbling through it. And he's always there helping us to shoulder our load. He's helping us and teaching us how to wear our phylacteries, how to wear our tassels, so that others will see his love. You can wear your phylacteries and tassels, but make sure that we do it so God's love is known. Amen.